are making a traditional Norwegian pastry called skulebrød, or school bread, which was hidden in children's lunch boxes for school. The ingredients necessary to make this dish are... Although our final product will not be refrigerated before it is baked, most of the ingredients involved to create our school bread um, were refrigerated. So nowadays, um, refrigerators use a type of gas called tetrafluorophane. When HFC is cooled to about negative 16 degrees Fahrenheit, it turns into a liquid. A motor, or compressor, um, inside the fridge squeezes the HFC, heating up the gas. As you can see, um, done by the red, goes all the way through up into this expansion valve. And the expansion valve, what the expansion valve does, is it takes the hot air and it turns it into cool air. And it just makes it all the way refreezing the whole refrigerator. And it just goes in a circle. We will be melting 100 grams of unsalted butter. <laughs> now that the butter is completely melted and lukewarm, we will be combining it with 350 milliliters of milk. Now we'll add one packet of dry yeast. We will stir this until it's completely dissolved. Now I will be explaining the concept of leavening. Leavening is an agent that is used to raise the dough by incorporating carbon dioxide bubbles into the dough. Yeast is relevant to our project because it is the ingredient that raises our dough. There are three different types of leavening agents. There are chemical agents, mechanical agents, and biological agents by breaking down the starch molecule. Fermentation will also make the dough become more acidic due to the increase in CO2 and alcohol. To grow best, it needs a warm, moist environment with an oxygen supply as well as sugar. It takes time for the yeast to grow. First, we have carton. Now that the yeast is completely dissolved in the milk and butter mixture, we'll pour it into the mixing bowl and add the dry ingredients. Next we have the salt, the sugar, and then we gradually add the flour. We have mixed all the ingredients together that has formed a dough. We'll have to let this dough sit and we'll let it rise for 30 minutes with the towel over it. Snake. So Adrian, what are you what are you doing right now? Right now I'll be kneading the dough and this will also help with the leavening process. Now that the dough is a smooth and shiny ball, we'll roll it into a long So now the dough is a long rolling each of these 12 pieces into a ball. Now we will be making the glaze. So these are the, these are the ingredients that will be needed to make the glaze. So we have the two deciliters of powdered sugar, four teaspoons of water, and two teaspoons of egg white. Make the glaze, it's really easy. All you have to do is add all of these ingredients together and mix them. Individual rolls have risen for another half hour. We're going to make a small indent in the middle of each one. And Adrian is going to put some of the pastry cream into the hole. We've just beaten one egg. And we will wipe it over. We have now heated the oven to uh, 400 degrees at convection bake. We're going to put them in for 12 to 15 minutes. Pastries have now cooked for 12 minutes and they are ready. It's a natural reaction consisting of the rearrangement of the amino compounds go under even more rearrangement. The amino molecules are submitted to the conversions to form the brown nitrogenous color we see on the school bread. Pastries have dried. We are going to put the final touches on. So first, some of the glaze that we made earlier, and then Adrian's going to sprinkle some of the shredded coconut on. Covering the concept of specific heat, 
Essentially, the specific heat capacity of a material is a measurement of the amount of heat energy required to increase or decrease the temperature of a given amount of substance by one degree Celsius. Tin, chromium, or sometimes nickel. Stainless steel is a good material for our baking today because it possesses many advantages. First, it is highly rust resistant. Second, it can withstand high temperatures on a stovetop as well as in the oven. And third, it heats up really rapidly. However, a negative aspect of stainless steel is that it doesn't allow for even distribution of heat. So this could explain why our butter did not melt uniformly. So here we have our final product.